What's up guys, it's me again. So today I'm going to review the basic features of STD bind. To keep it simple, bind is a function that lets you bind arguments to callables. Keep in mind, a callable is anything you can execute like a function. So a lambda, a functor, or a function are all callable. The syntax of bind is very simple. It accepts a callable object as its first argument, then the values you want to bind on that function. Bind will then return a function object with the values bound to the arguments of the original function. So let's begin with the code and write a simple Lambda expression. Now let's say I want to permanently bind the numbers 1 and 2 to this Lambda expression. For this we can use bind. As you can see, the syntax of bind is very simple. The first thing we did is we passed our lambda expression, then the values of each of the parameters of the lambda. So this is the lambda expression, and these are the values that we want to bind. So one and two will be bound to the function object returned from bind, meaning this one. In this example, I call the resulting functor print one two. Now to call this function, we will just run it normally like any other function. So as you can see, I ran this function and we got one and two, even though I passed no arguments. Now keep in mind, using bind forces you to specify a value for all of the parameters of a function. If you want to partially bind a function, you would need to use placeholders, which I'll get to later. Uh, for now, there's a C++ 20 function called bind front, which looks cleaner than having to specify placeholders. Now, partially binding a function means to bind it in a way where some of the parameters are bound to values, but other parameters are still open. So as an example of partially binding, we can use bind front to bind the value one to this first parameter of our lambda. Now, this will give us a function which still requires one argument to be passed. So by using bind front, we were able to bind the first parameter of our lambda while keeping the second parameter open. Now, keep in mind, we can use bind front to bind multiple values. If you want, you can still fully bind a function using bind front, for example. So as you can see, both one and two got printed uh, because we bound both one and two to this lambda. Overall, bind front will take as many values as you pass in, then bind those values to the front of the function passed in. Now, keep in mind, bind front is a C++ 20 feature, so your compiler may not support it if it's out of date. And there's also a function called bind back. Uh, which will be supported in C++23. Now that we saw how to do partial binding with bind front, let's see another method using placeholders. Uh, placeholder is uh, kind of like an IOU. So whenever you specify a placeholder, you're telling bind that you will supply an argument when you invoke the function. When you're binding a function and you want to leave one of the parameters open for an argument, just pass in a placeholder like this. Uh, just to, to save on typing, I'm going to include the placeholders namespace. Now, keep in mind, I'm using the entire namespace for a placeholder because otherwise the code would look too verbose. So um, doing this without using a namespace would look something like this. I don't think this much typing is good for you, so I recommend using the namespace instead. Whoops. Yeah, so you can't use uh, placeholders with bind front, you would have to use bind. So as you can see, we bound the one to lambda and we kept this open as a placeholder. So we, we used the second parameter as a placeholder. Uh, then what we did is we printed out one and then y and I passed in 10 for the y and it prints out one and 10. So another thing bind can do is switch the order of your parameters. So for example, we can swap the order that values are passed to a function by specifying uh, placeholder two first, then placeholder one. 
So here we created a function where the first parameter will now be the second parameter and the second parameter will be the first. So as you can see, even though I passed 10 first and then 20 second, I get 20 first and 10 second. So it pretty much just swaps the order of the parameters of this function. If you want another example, we can create a function that accepts three arguments and repositions them using bind. So in this example, the third parameter becomes the first, the second parameter becomes the third, and the third parameter becomes the second. So why do you want to do this? Well, I have no idea. Comment below if you have a good use for doing this. Okay, so jokes aside, let's move on to the next topic. Okay, so you should be familiar with using bind, but in this section, I want to show you that you can mimic a lot of the functionality of bind using lambda expressions. So going back to a basic example of bind, Okay, so if you were paying attention to this video, you should already understand what's going on here. So what I want to show you now is instead of using bind, we can accomplish pretty much the same functionality just by using lambdas. So what we can do is we can define a lambda like this. So in both cases, we get a function object that calls our lambda with the first argument bound to the value one. If we need to bind a variable from a local scope, we can capture it in our lambda using a capture clause like this. And finally, if we want to reposition the arguments, we can write down a lambda definition that accepts the arguments, then passes them to a function however we want. Okay, so for example, what we did here is we repurposed this foo function so that whenever we pass something into it, uh, instead of the first argument being printed out first, what we're doing is we're reordering the parameters being passed in so that instead of x being passed in first, y gets passed in first. So using this lambda, we are reordering. So as you can see, we're calling lamb and so as you can see we're calling lamb and the first argument passed in is first and the second argument passed in is second but when this gets printed out we get second first and the first is second now that you saw how to use std bind and how you can simulate the same behavior using lambdas it's actually preferred to use lambdas over bind I'm not going to go into the details, but bind can be slower compared to using lambda expressions. So keep that in mind. Uh, that is all for this video. Uh, remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one, and I will see you later.